For this homework assignment, you are asked to do exercises 9.3 on page 287, problems 1 through 8. For this assignment, the instructions state, for each statement below, classify the statement by identifying the main connective and construct a truth table. Beginning with problem number 1. You are given the following proposition, A or B or A. And for this one, the main connective is, I'm getting the pen here, this disjunction right here. Notice that the parentheses, these restrict this disjunction to B and A right here. And this disjunction, it ranges over not only this atomic proposition, but it also ranges over this compound proposition right here. And for that reason, it has the widest scope. Now you are also asked to construct a truth table for this. And in order to construct a truth table, you need to follow the three steps. And the first step is to calculate the number of rows you need. And for this, you have to plug in into this equation two raised to the power of the number of distinct propositions that we have, atomic propositions. And we have two. We have A and we have B. So we raise two to the power of two and we're going to have four total rows. Then once we have this, what we do is we write in the truth values for all the atomic propositions. And here I have the chart laid out. I have A and B right here just so we can keep our columns straight, the truth values for our columns straight. And then I have this compound proposition written out. I have a column for A, a column for the first disjunction, a column for, um, well, I have these out of order, but it's ultimately not going to make any bit of difference. So... Um, I got lucky this time, but A and B here are out of order, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then I have a column for A, a column for B, and I have uh, a column for the disjunction within the parentheses. Notice here, down here, I have a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here. Uh, you know, having um, the A and B out of order here as I did, it just highlights the importance of uh, using the two left-hand columns over here because it'll still keep everything straight. So we're going to go ahead and fill in the first two columns right here. And since we have four total rows, we go to the first one and we do half true and half false. And see if I can get it to come up. Yep, we do half true right here and half false. Then we come to the second column. We're going to half the number of trues and then half the number of falses. So this is, we did two trues and then two false. We'll do one true, one false, one true, one false. Then what we do is we transfer all the, the uh, values that we have right here for A, we transfer them to every column for A, and we're gonna transfer all the values for B to the B column. So you'll notice right here, true, true, false, false. A is again, true, true, false, false. And B is true, false, true, false. Um, and then we come to, so we've completed step two. Then we come to step three. And step three is we assign truth values to all the connectives. Now we've already said that our main connective is this disjunction right here. So this one is our main connective and we always save that for last. So we start with, when we start assigning truth value, we start with the connective that has the least scope or connectives that have the least scope. And this one right here, this disjunction has the least scope. So we're going to start with it, if the screen will ever come up. We're going to start with this, and you see I've highlighted it. And in order to find the truth value of this disjunction, we're going to have to use this column right here and this column right here. So I'll go ahead and highlight those. And for figuring out the truth value of it, we just consult the, the truth tables that I gave you for disjunction. Remember... Disjunct, a disjunction is true just in case one of the disjuncts is true. As long as one of the disjuncts is true, uh, the disjunction is true. And so I'll just go ahead and fill those out. Uh, in every instance, they're true because one of the two disjuncts is true, except for the last one. In that case, both disjuncts are false. Now that we've completed the uh, column for this connective, we're going to come to this connective. And note here what is going on. This connective, we're using this A, which is an atomic proposition, and then we're going to use the truth of this entire complex proposition. So what we're going to use is we're going to use 
the, the screen will come up. We're going to use this column right here for A, its truth value, and then we're going to use this column. And again, the reason we're using this column is because what, are we, what we're saying here is uh, A or B or A, right? A or B or A. So we're trying to define the truth value for this disjunction by looking at the truth of A and also by looking at the truth of B or A. So we're going to, these are our two disjuncts. A is one disjunct, B or A is the other disjunct. So here though, what we do is we just use these truth values the same way as we've done it in the past. Um, we just, remember for a disjunction, as long as one of the disjuncts is true, then it's, the disjunction is true. So here we have both disjuncts are true. Here we have both are, here we have one is, and here in the bottom we have that um, both are false. So we can just go ahead and fill in all these values the exact same way we've done. And as it turns out for this, uh, it's true, 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 false. So what this chart tells us right here is when this proposition is true. And this proposition is going to be true anytime A is true uh, or B is true, basically. Um, if, if uh, I'm sorry, when, uh, that's not quite right. Uh, yeah, if, if A is true or B is true, then this thing is going to be true. Uh, and anytime both A and B are false, whenever they're both false, then and only then will this statement be false. So that's what this tells us. And we can see that right here just by uh, looking at the values. We know that basically the truth of this is just honestly the truth value of it is... Um, it's, a, it's actually equivalent to, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but this has the same truth value as just B or A or A or B. Uh, it's the exact same truth value, nothing really changing. So anyway, all right, moving right along. Maybe. Number two, uh, not C if and only if D. Now here again, we had to find the main connective and hopefully you can see that the biconditional is the main connective. Not this connective right here, this attaches only to C, right? It's attaching only to C. And so the, it, the main connective, um, the if and only if, is a, a pl being applied to both C and D. And so for that reason, it has broader scope and it's the main connective. Now what we need to do is we need to calculate uh, the number of rows, step one. And here we have two different atomic propositions. We have C and we have D. So we raise 2 to the power of 2, and we get 4, just like before. And then we come to step 2. Write in all the truth values for atomic propositions. So here I have it laid out for you. We have our two columns right here. And then notice I have a column for this connective, a column for this proposition, a column for this connective, and then a column for this proposition. And just like before, we fill in our truth values. Now I'm going to kind of you know speed along here, but you notice... We have four rows, and in the first column, we always do half true and then half false. Then when we come to the second one, we do, you know, right here we did two trues in a row and then two false. Well, we do half of that, one true, one false, one true, one false. And then we just transfer these values over here. So true, true, false, false for C, true, true, false, false for C, true, false, true, false for D, and then you see it right there is true, false, true, false. Now what we do is we come to step three and we assign truth value to all the connectives. And we know that the if and only if, the biconditional, this is our main connective. So we're gonna begin with the connective of least scope and I already have it highlighted. This is the connective of least scope. And what we're gonna be negating is of course, if it'll come up, C. So basically, we're just going to be taking the opposite of all of these and put all of these truth values under the column of C and putting them right here. Well, the opposite of true is false and the opposite of false is true. So this is pretty straightforward. Now what we're doing is we're going to calculate the main connective, which is the if and only if. And again, keep in mind what we're saying here, uh, if and only if. And we are looking at the truth value of its parts. I don't know what to call these, antecedent and consequent. I don't know. Um, we're looking at not C if and only if D. So we're looking at the truth value of this entire compound proposition and 
if and only if this atomic proposition right here. So we're going to be using different columns to calculate the biconditional. We're going to be looking at this one right here, because this what this column tells us is basically the truth of not C. And then we're going to look at this truth values of not C. And then we're going to look at that's not not C as an Adolf Hitler, but not C. I just realized it was like um, it sounded like Nazi, but uh, so anyways, we're going to use these truth values. Now, the biconditional is true only when both um, propositions in it are true or both are false. So if one is true and one is false, it's false. So here we have one is false and one is true, so it's false, false and false. This row will be true, true and true. This one will be true, true and false. That one will be false, and we can go ahead and fill those in. And here is the, the final truth value. So when is this proposition right here not C if and only if D? When is that true? It's true just in case it's true just in case C is true and D is false, or C is false and D is true. Um, that's the only time these two right here conditions are the only time this proposition is going to be true. All right, moving right along. We'll speed through these a little bit quicker. I'm doing the first ones a little slowly. Um, well, uh, I've kind of got ahead of myself here, but th this is the number three, not E or F. And here we have to figure out the main connective, and the main connective is actually going to be the not. Um, the parentheses are restricting the scope of uh, this disjunction. This disjunction applies to E or F, whereas the not here applies to this entire compound proposition. So the not is actually going to be our main connective. Now, we've got to calculate the number of rows in order to construct our truth table. And just like with the previous two examples, we're only going to have four rows. So let's get our truth table up here. We know we're going to have four rows. And here is our truth table. Um, and you see here I have a column for E, a column for F, I have a column for not, and then a column for E, column for this connective, and then a column for F. And we write in our truth values. I'm just going to go ahead and do this. It's just like before, just like the previous two examples. Uh, the truth values I have under here for E, they're the exact same as here, F, same thing. Now what we want to do is we want to calculate, move to step three, and calculate the truth values for all the connectives. And we're going to begin with the disjunction because that one has the least scope. And just like before, it's just like with all disjunction, it's true as long as one of the two disjuncts is true. And you notice here um, we have E is true, so we don't even have to look over here to be honest. As long as one of the two is true, this is going to be true. Down here, F is true, so this is true. And it's only at the bottom that uh, this disjunction is false, when both E and F are false. Now what we do is we come over here and we're going to calculate the not. And again, we're calculating the not of this entire compound proposition. So we're going to be looking to the truth value of this connective because that tells us the truth value of the entire compound proposition. So basically what we do is we just take the opposite of everything in this column. Well, it didn't go far enough. Everything in this column. And if it's true right here, well, not true is false and then not false is true and we see here get it to change screens it's, this thing wants to be slow um, the, this is basically false in all instances the only time this proposition up here is true the only time this is true is if both E and F are false if both E and F are false then this proposition is true if one of them is true or both is true this proposition is false um, so, uh, th I don't know if you remember, we had an example in one homework assignment where it said, I'm not going to Arizona or Iowa. That's how you would say this, um, right here, not E or F or not, I forget what it was in the assignment, not I or A. Um, but that's what you're saying here. So anyway, all right, number four. G and not G. Um, G and not G. Well, we need to figure out first what the main connective is. Well, the not right here, this is one of the connectives, but see, this one applies only to this G. The 
and this other connective, however, applies to this G and to this G. So the and is actually our main connective. So we figured out our main connective. The next thing we want to do is construct a truth table. And in order to do that, step one, calculate the number of rows. Well, here we only have one distinct proposition. We only have G, all right? So we're only going to have two rows. This one's going to be kind of easy. Uh, and here we go. We write this up. And we write G. We're only going to have two rows because true and false, that's all G can be. Um, there's nothing else. And then we just plug in true and false everywhere we see G. Now what we're going to do is we're going to follow on to step three and assign truth value to all the connectives. And we're going to begin, since this and is our main connective, we're going to save that for last. And so the only other option is to start here at not. And basically what we're going to do for that is we're going to use the truth values underneath G because we're saying not G. So we just take the opposite. The opposite of true is false. The opposite of false is true. And we put them here. Now what we're going to do is calculate and. And again, I know I keep beating a dead horse here, but the main connective and is saying and, and it's combining G, which is an atomic proposition, and not G. So that's what we're going to be looking at when we calculate and. We're going to be looking right here under G, and then we're going to be looking under the not, because this is telling us the truth values for not G. And when, when, whenever we look at a um, conjunction, which is what we're dealing with here, the only time it's true is if both conjuncts are true. So you know, to use the language I've been using, this and has two conjuncts. One conjunct is G, the other conjunct is not G. So this first conjunct is true and this one's false, so this is going to be false. This one is false and this one's true, so that one's going to be false. And so this proposition right here, here's a fun fact for you, this is always false. This is never true. In fact, we're going to learn about this in the next lecture. This is what we call a self-contradiction. It's, it's like a, a sentence like, I can't... So here's, here's a, a self-contradiction. I can't speak any English. Well, you just did, right? That, that sentence contradicts itself. Uh, you know, what I'm saying now is both true and not true. Well, that can't be the case. Um, it, it can't be the case at all. That's a self-contradiction. So... Uh, Anyway, uh, this right here is necessarily false. It's false in all instances. It's a self-contradiction. All right, number five. A, if H, then I, if, this is a tricky one to say, if H, then if I, then H. So we have two connectives going on here. Um, we have the conditional, right, occurring twice um, right here and right here. Now, what's our main connective? Well, the parentheses, they restrict the scope of this connective, and it applies only to right here, to these two atomic propositions. Whereas this connective, the first one, it applies to H, which is an atomic proposition, but it also applies to this entire compound proposition. So the first one is actually our main connective. Now what we want to do is construct a truth table, and we have to calculate the total number of rows. Now even though we have three atomic propositions, we only have two different ones. We have H and we have I. So just like with the others, we're going to take 2 to the power of 2 to get a total of 4 rows. Alright, sorry I tracked ahead too quickly. So we're going to have 4 total rows just like all the previous uh, exercises today. Step 2, write in all truth values for atomic propositions. So here we have our uh, truth table laid out. We have H and I, and then we have H. Uh, we have a column for H, a column for this connective. We have I here, a column for the second connective, and we have H. And I'm just going to go ahead and fill this entire chart in. It's the exact same as everything we've seen. We just do true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and then transfer those everywhere that letter is repeated. Let me make sure I did this correctly. Yep. Now what we do is we move on to step three and we assign truth values to all connectives. And we start with the connective of least scope. So we're going to start with this connective right here, if the screen will ever change. We're going to start with this connective. And since we're starting with this one, 
we're going to use I and H in order to calculate the truth value of this conditional. Now, if you recall, a conditional is true just in case, um, let me just say it, it's only false if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. If ever is the, there's a time where the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, then the conditional is false. In all other cases, it's true. So let's look here. The antecedent here is true. The consequent is false, so it's true. The antecedent is false. The consequent is true, so it's true. The antecedent is true, but the consequent is false. So in this row, it's going to be false. And down here, the antecedent is false, and the consequent is uh, false. So this is going to be uh, true. And I'll go ahead and fill those in for you so you can see, but um, because the, the antecedent is true and the consequent is true, it's true, true. This is the only one that's false, and then down here it's true. Now we come to uh, figuring out our main connective. And again, sorry if I'm beating a dead horse here, but what we're doing is we're looking at the truth value of the antecedent, which is H, and the truth value of the consequent, which is if I then H. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use this column right here, as I have it highlighted, because that's the antecedent, and then this column, because this is telling us the truth value of this entire compound proposition. And so with that in mind, again, a conditional is false only when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. If the, if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, then it's false. So let's look here. The antecedent is true, the consequent is true. So right here, guess what? It's going to be true. The antecedent is true, the consequent is true. It's going to be true. The antecedent is false and the consequent is false. Well, that's true because, again, um, as I explained in the lecture on conditionals, the only time this is false is if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. The antecedent is false and the consequent is true, so this is going to be true. And I'll write that in a little more neatly for you to see. It'll come up, but there we go. And this proposition here, now this is interesting, we're going to learn about this next time. This proposition is what we call a tautology. It means it's always true, it's trivially true, it's true in all circumstances, um, that it's impossible for it to be false, like one is equal to one. That's just all, that's impossible for that to be false, all right? Um, a bachelor is an unmarried male. It's impossible for that to be false because by definition, a bachelor just is an unmarried male. So these are what we call tautologies. Um, uh, you know, tautologies, they appear in student papers sometimes and they're often funny. I remember a friend of mine, he had a student write in a paper once that, um, it's, the paper started off with the line, death is the number one killer of men, women, and children every year. Um, and it's just a silly kind of thing to say because it's impossible. Yeah, I mean, death is the killer. I mean, it's just impossible for that to be false um, because, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it without um, uh, saying something that's uh, less complicated than that. I mean, obviously, death kills. Uh, anyways, it's just you come across... Uh, silly little propositions like that from time to time. They're just trivially true. Um, they're tautologies. And that's what this uh, proposition is. It's true in all instances. All right. So moving on to number six, if it'll come up. Uh, if J, then if K, I'm sorry, if J, then K and L. Now we need to figure out, first things first, the main connective here. And Clearly, you can see by this point that uh, we have two connectives and, and we have the conditional. Uh, but notice the parentheses, they restrict the scope of and, so it applies only to J, I mean, to K and L. Whereas the conditional here applies to J, it also ranges over this entire compound proposition. So for that reason, the conditional is our main connective. Now, we need to construct a truth table. And the first step is we got, got to calculate the number of rows. And this one, this is the first one we've had this occur, uh, we have three different atomic propositions, J, K, and L. So we have to raise two to the power of three, and we're going to have eight total rows. I know this is, is cray cray, but um, so we're going to have eight total rows. Well, now we come to step two, which is we write in the truth value for all the atomic propositions. So here we have three 
columns, J for our different atomic propositions, and we have eight rows underneath. And then I have a column here for this compound proposition, a column for J, a column for the conditional, a column for K, a column for the conjunction, and a column for L. And we begin right here with writing in the truth values for J. Now we have eight total rows, so we're going to go down at half true and half false. Just like this. True, four trues, four false. Now we come to the second column, and since we had four trues here, we're going to do half of that true and then half false. So it's four true and four false, so we're going to do two true, two false. Two true, two false. All right? True, true, false, false. True, true, false, false. And then since we did two right here, we're going to do one right here. One true, one false. One true, one false. True, false, true, false, true, false. Now, if I haven't explained this before or said it today, just as a friendly reminder, basically what this does right here, sorry if my cursor will come, this tells us all the various combinations of truth values for these three propositions. There's one scenario in which they're all true. There's one scenario in which the first two are true and the second one is false. There's one scenario in which the first is true, the last is true, and the, and the second is false. So you see here, it's a complete range of truth values for these. Now what we do is we're going to just transfer the columns right here for J, K, and L. We're going to transfer them all over here. So just go ahead and do that and, and save some time. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to calculate... Uh, move to step three and assign truth value to all the connectives. And again, we're going to save the main connective, which is this one right here, the conditional, save the main connective for last, and begin with the connective that has the least scope. And we're going to begin with AND. Now, to remind you, AND is only true, a, a conjunction is only true in case both of the conjuncts are true. So look right here. This conjunct is true and this one's true, so this is true. This is conjunct is true and this one's false, so this is false. False and true, false. False and false, false. True and true, true. True and false, false. False and true, false. False and false, false. So... Sorry, I should have highlighted these things first, if it'll do that. So you see right here that we have all our truth values laid out, and there are only two times when this is true, okay? So next what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to calculate uh, or determine the truth value for our main connective. And again, we look at the antecedent, which is J, and the consequent, which is K and L. Since this is in parentheses, uh, this is our entire, this is our consequent. And a, a conditional is only false if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So let's look right here. The antecedent is true, the consequent is true, so this is true. The antecedent is true and the consequent is false, so it's false right here. The antecedent is true and the consequent is false, so it's false right here. Antecedent true and the consequent false, it's false. And notice that all of these are false. So here's just a quick tip. Whenever the antecedent is false and a conditional, which is what we have here, it's going to be true. You don't even, it, honestly, if the antecedent is false, you don't even care about what comes next. You just know that it's going to be true. So here we have the truth values laid out for us. And I'll just put them up here a little more neatly, if it'll come up. There we go. And you can see here when this is true. This is basically true if both J and K are, uh, um, both, I'm sorry, if, let's try this one more time. This is true if J, K, and L are true. Uh, it's also true anytime, you know, honestly, anytime J is false, it'll be true. Uh, however, it's false if um, J is true and either K or L is false. So if J is true and we have K or L is false, then this proposition is false. Um, but it's true if J, K, and L are true. It's also true if J is false. Anytime J is false, this proposition will be, I'm sorry, when I say this proposition, I mean this entire thing up here. If, if J, K, and L are true, it's true. If J is true but K or L is false, then it's false. 
If J is false, doesn't matter about K or L. If J is false, then it is true. All right. Number seven. M or N, if and only if O. So the first thing we have to do is calculate our main connective. And again, we have these parentheses here, which we have, I'm sorry, let me slow down. We have two connectives. Or, and we also have if and only if, the biconditional. Now, the parentheses right here, they restrict the scope of or, so that it applies only to this compound proposition. Whereas the conditional, this applies both to this atomic proposition, O, and to this entire compound proposition. And for that reason, the conditional is our main connective. Now we want to calculate, uh, or do step one, because we want to write up a truth table for this. And step one is calculate the total number of rows. Well, just like in the previous exercise, we have three different atomic propositions. We have M, N, and O. So we raise two, well, what's going on here? We raise two to the power of three, and we get eight total rows. So that's how many total rows we're gonna have. Then we come to step two and we write in all the truth values for all atomic propositions. So we're gonna have eight total rows. I have our three columns here for our three atomic propositions. I have a column for M, a column for the disjunction N, a column for our biconditional, and then a column for our other atomic proposition. And uh, just like with the previous example, uh, we, we have eight total rows, so we're going to do half true and half false. Since we did four true here, we're going to do two true, two false, two true, two false, right here. So we just keep, you notice, we just as we move to the right, we just keep going half. Um, and then half here, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. And then just transfer those all those truth values to the rest of the chart. All right, now we come to step three and we assign truth value to all connectives. And what we're going to do is we're going to begin, we're going to save our main connective for last. That's our main connective. And we're going to begin with the connective of least scope, which is our disjunction. So we're going to begin with the or. And if I can get it to come up. And since we're looking at the this compound proposition right here, M or N, we're trying to figure out the truth value of it, we're gonna use M and N. So here we go. Um, uh, a disjunction is true just in case one of the disjuncts is true. So true and true, this is gonna be true. True and true, this is gonna be true. Anywhere you see a true right here, you just know to put a true. This is false, but look, this one's true. This one's false, but this one's true. And False and false, false and false. The, only the, the last two are false. So we figured out the truth values for it. Now we're going to come to figuring out the truth value for our main connective. And again, we're trying to figure out the truth value for this compound proposition if and only if this atomic proposition. So we're going to use this column right here because that tells us the truth value of M or N, and we're going to use O right here. And these are our two, I don't know what we call them, uh, our antecedent and consequent, our two, uh, I don't know what the, what the parts are for uh, biconditional. Um, I don't know if there are names for that, but a biconditional is true only if um, both, are, both parts are true or both are false. So here we have true and true, so this is going to be true, true, and false, so this is going to be false. True and true, so it's going to be true right here, true and false, it's going to be false. True and true, it's going to be true, true and false, it's going to be false. False and true, it's going to be false. False and false, it's going to be true. So that's how we calculate it. Uh, the truth value for our main connective, and I'll try to get it to come up here. And here is the truth table for uh, this proposition. So what this tells us, again, are the scenarios under which this is true. Notice this is true if M, N, and O are true. It's false if M and N are true and O is false. Um, it's true if, uh, 
M is true and F is false and O is true, then it'll be true. And you can go through the rest and you can see all the scenarios under which this entire proposition would be true. Finally, number eight. This one's a tough one to say. I was practicing this one earlier, but it's if P then Q, if and only if, if not Q, then not P. Now, you might be clever enough to notice something here uh, before we get started. Now, uh, you might not have thought about it, but it, you might recall that uh, this proposition, if P then Q, notice what is this? If not Q, then not P. Uh, anybody remember? This is the contrapositive, the if not Q, then not P. This is the contrapositive of if P, then Q. That'll become important later on, but I did want to point that out. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five connectives. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out what our main connective is. Now let's go through them. Well, notice right here that this connective, this is being restricted to P and Q. So it's only talk, it's only, you know, scope only covers these, so that can't be it. Let's come over here. The not right here, this is applying only to Q. The not here is applying only to P. This conditional right here, well, this applies only to P and Q. But the biconditional in the middle, notice that applies to this entire compound proposition. It also applies to this entire compound proposition. And for that reason, the biconditional, this is our main connective. Okay, so in order to construct a truth table, we're going to have to follow the steps. And the first step is calculate the number of rows. Now we have four atomic propositions up here, but notice that we only have two distinct ones. We have P, and P is repeated over here, and we have Q, and Q is repeated over here. So we only say 2 to the power of 2, and we're only going to have four total rows. We're going to have a lot of columns because we have a lot of uh, connectives. So we come to step 2, which is write in all the truth values for the atomic propositions. And so you notice down here I have a column for, for P, for the first conditional, for Q, a column for the biconditional, a column for not, a column for Q, for this conditional, not, and then a column for P. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to write in the truth value for all of these. And at this point, hopefully you have a sense of how this works. Uh, but the truth values, we just do true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. And then we just subst or just transfer all of the ones in the left-hand column all, all the way over here. Now we come to step three, and we assign truth value to all connectives. Okay, so we know that... This right here is our main connective, the if and only if. So we're saving the main connective for last. And we're going to begin with the connectives of least scope. And what we do is we work inside these parentheses. Now we could start um, either with this compound proposition or we could start with this one. But I'm just going to start with if P then Q because that comes first. So we're going to begin with if P then Q. And we want to figure out the truth value for the connective there. And... We're going to, in order to figure out the truth value for this connective, here P is our antecedent and Q is our consequent. And here uh, I've already just went ahead and filled in the truth values because a conditional is false only if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And that's what we see right here. Um, true and true is going to be true. True and false is going to be false. False, uh, like I said earlier, anytime the antecedent is false, the conditional is true. So we, we went ahead and did that. So now we're going to move over. Um, sorry, I skipped ahead too quickly. I'm going to back up. So now we're going to move over here and we're going to calculate the truth values for this compound proposition. Well, we're going to start, as always, with the connective of least scope. We're, we're focusing on this compound proposition, but even here, the connectives have d various degrees of scope. The not applies only to the Q. The not here applies only to the P. This conditional, however, this has broader scope than the negation. So we're going to begin with not. And we could start with not P or we could start with not Q. It doesn't, logically doesn't matter. I'm just going to start with not Q. And basically what we do is we just, you know, we have the truth values for Q laid out. And we just take the opposite and we put them right here. So if we have true, we put false, false, we put true, true, we put false, false, we put true. So we calculated the truth values for the not Q. 
So then we move on and we calculate the truth values for not P. We already have the, the truth values for P laid out and we just do the opposite. Right here we had true, true, false, false. We just say false, false, true, true. And we got that laid out. And then we come and we're gonna calculate the truth value for the conditional. And so basically what we're looking at, if it's not clear from the chart, is we're looking at the truth value for not Q if not Q, then not P. So we're going to use these columns that I have highlighted because that's telling us the truth value for not Q. This one's telling us the truth value for not P. And again, a conditional is false only if the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. So here the antecedent is false, so it's true. The antecedent is true and this is false, so this is false. This is the only time it's going to be false, true and true. Finally, we're going to calculate the biconditional. And to calculate the biconditional, get it to come up, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at the truth value of this, if and only if, this. And so we're going to be using this column right here that I have highlighted and this column right here. And we can see that the biconditional is true if both are true or both are false. So true, true, it's gonna be true. False, false, it's gonna be true. True, true, it's gonna be true. True, true, it's gonna be true. Now I said this earlier and this is why it becomes important because the truth is if you were you know, thinking about it and it actually it didn't even dawn on me until I filled the chart out so I guess I'm not clever enough either is that this actually makes perfect sense that you'd have if and only if. if P then Q if and only if, if not Q then not P because remember the biconditional is basically a, a, a relationship of logical equivalency. If you, say to, if you say A if and only if B, what you're saying is A and B are logically equivalent. If, if one is true, the other is true. If one is false, the other is false. Um, so it, if not Q then not P, this is the contrapositive of if P then Q. So these two propositions here, if P then Q, and if not Q then not P, these are logically equivalent, and that's exactly what the biconditional relationship is. It's a relationship of logical equivalency. And so this proposition, right, or this proposition right here, this entire thing, this is also a tautology, as I was saying earlier. It's true in all circumstances, uh, which that makes perfect sense because, you know, the if not Q, then not P, that's logically equivalent to if P, then Q. Well, hopefully you're getting a sense of how to construct these truth tables. I know it's not always easy, and it's actually probably the hardest part is just it's really tedious filling in all these T's and F's. But this is a very valuable tool for us because, like I said, we can test when a compound proposition is true. Uh, it takes a lot of work, but it is useful. Now, in the following lecture, we're going to not only just learn how to test when one of these proposition is, uh, propositions are true, we're going to learn how to also determine when two propositions are logically equivalent, when they're contradictory, or when a proposition is self-contradictory. We're also going to learn how to determine when a proposition is a tautology, which we also um, already looked at a little bit today. If you're having any questions about this, like always, please feel free to email me and we can work on any kind of confusion that you might have at that point.